listening yes. to the conversation and what took place with these women and with this special angel. First of all, this angel gives a message of peace. Amen. This angel, this special messenger, this, this special angel gives a message of peace. Listen, listen. Like this virus, we, the world, is facing can 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 be can be uh, fear can be deadly. Fear Amen. can be contagious. Fear can be poisonous. Because when one hangs around folks who is always in fear, if we are not careful, church, it can spread upon us as well. That's why they, they require that we have six feet away from each other. We need to be six feet away from folks who have fear. We need to be six feet away from the, those doubters, those, those, those ones who don't believe in Christ Jesus. We need to stay from those who will contaminate us and cause us to get sick because they don't want to accept today as resurrection day. Amen. These ladies had fear. Fear that Christ was gone. And fear that an unexpected special messenger, an angel, shows up in front of him. But here's some good news that I want to share with you of this message of peace. But grace come, becomes a part of the angel's words when he gives the word of peace. He gives the word of peace. Look, 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 at, look at the word he uses. He said unto them, be not afraid. Amen. Be not afraid. That's a message of peace. Be not afraid. Uh, and my brothers and sisters, this is how God deals with us. When fear takes its course, he gives us a word of peace. Uh, I don't have this in my notes, but I, I, it's reminded me of when the disciples and Jesus was in the boat. Y'all remember the story? When he was in the boat and Jesus was taking a nap, trying to get some rest, and then all of a sudden this storm comes rushing through the boat. And as they was in the boat and the storm come raging into the boat, mind you, these disciples, some of them are fishermen. They know the weather. They understand about storm. But it was Man. something different about this storm. Something that they couldn't control, something that, that couldn't get to, something that got to them, something that put fear in them. They woke up Jesus. Amen. And the words that they used to Jesus, they said, Master, don't you care that we go perish? Jesus rose. He didn't address them right away. He looked at the wind and he said, Peace, be still. Peace, be still. He said, Peace. And I want to share with somebody here who's looking right now. Whatever you're going through in life, Jesus has already got your back. Because Amen. Saying, Peace be still. Peace be still to that virus. Peace be still to your hurts and pains. Peace be still to your loneliness. Peace be still to, to, to the depression state of mind. Whatever Amen. Jesus, when he says peace, the Bible says, when he said it, the wind stopped. And later on in that story, in that text, the disciples says that, 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 that what kind of man is this that even the wind obeys his voice? Let me tell you something. You use Christ's voice to any circumstances, any situation that's going on in your life. When you use his voice, they have to cease. Satan knows that voice. The enemy knows that voice. Amen. He may try to trip you up and draw things to your attention and make you be afraid. But call on Jesus. When you call on him, use his word. Peace. Peace. Be still. Be still. It was it was Timothy. Yes. First chapter in seven verse, second Timothy. That Paul said to Timothy, for God has not given us the spirit of fear. Amen. Let me say that again. It's in there, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
Yes. Aren't you glad to know that once Christ came into your life, once he came into our life, we now rest in the same resurrection power. That's why you can defeat the enemy with the power of Christ working in you and through you. And you can tell any virus, anything, any circumstances, any problems, peace be still. Peace be still. People of God, listen. We are alive and we are well in Christ Jesus. No longer are we dead. No matter what's going on around us. No matter if we're in the house or out of the house. Yes. We're alive. Come on. No matter how the world views this pandemic crisis, we're alive. No matter how it looks on the outside, like nobody is here, like everybody is gone. Alive. Because to live in Christ is to die is, is gain. Once the sinful flesh in Christ has been buried in Christ, listen, we are alive. And it happened because of the power of the resurrection. Let me say this, if Jesus would not have rose from the grave, we would still be in our sin. Yes. We'd be dead like dead man born. We'd be dead like, like those in the grave. But thank God, praise God, that he got up on that Sunday morning. Yes. And, and, and because of that power of resurrection, my brothers and sisters, don't walk around feeling like you're dead. Don't walk around feeling like everything is lost. Don't walk around feeling like, hey man, you're not going to make it. Because I believe when you get this in your spirit, yes, you will have that same confidence. Yes, Lord. That you can arise like Jesus did above anything. Yes, Lord. Amen. Right. Amen. Paul said in Romans 6 and 8, Now when we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall live with him. Oh, yeah. Timothy 2 and 11, 2 Timothy 2 and 11 tells us, It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Yes. And my brothers and sisters, being alive in Christ is just not living in Christ. But John called it an abundant life. John 10 and 10, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill, to kill and, destroy. and destroy. Amen. Jesus says, though, but I come that you might have life. Amen. Here we go. And not just life, but more life more abundantly. Abundance is a lot. Abundantly is great. In other words, you're just not under the norm of living. But you are living above any circumstance Amen. that comes your way. Because you have the abundance of living. You don't have small living. You don't have medium-sized living. You don't have just a little living. You just don't have living. But Jesus says you have abundance of living. You have a whole lot to live for. Amen. You got to You got to believe in him. Amen. Listen, if more of God's people would, will take this time to evaluate, take, take this time right where we are now, and evaluate, look around, and see what the Lord is doing. Stay, Amen. Take a step back. Amen. And see what the Lord is doing. Don't, 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 don't go into a worrisome or a pity party. But evaluate what's going on around us. Amen. Amen. In this epidemic called the pandemic crisis. If we just look around, I believe, and I truly believe this, God is doing some things. He, 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 he is doing this time right now. God is doing something. Amen. What is he doing, preacher? I'm glad you asked. I believe, church, that he's reaching somebody. Amen. I believe that some lost soul through this pandemic crisis is turning their life to Christ Jesus. Come on, say it, Pastor. I believe he's getting a message across. Not just any message, but a special message to some unsaved person that the resurrection power of Christ is well active. Yes. Moving around us, even during these difficult times. That's my belief. I believe God has reached a mother, a father, a son, 
a daughter, a grandmother, a grandfather, Amen. a uncle, and I, I believe a friend. Come on, Pastor. I believe he's touching somebody yes. who's trying to run to the cross. Thank you, Father God. Say, what must I do to be saved? Yes. That's how God works. Yes, he yes, yes. sometimes have to, have, to, have to draw attention to the unsaved. Yes, now, Lord. Now, that are saved, we can help with that by being a witness to the unsaved and reminding them that, yes, we see a crisis in our world. Yes. But we don't have to give in to the crisis. No. If you're not saved, turn your life over to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Remember when you had a crisis? Remember in the day when you was unsaved? Yes. And there was an epidemic going on around you? And it led you to Christ Jesus. I don't know what that problem was. I don't know what that crisis was. But whatever it was, it led you to Christ Jesus. Amen. That's what's going on today, church. That's what's going on today. It's no different than when you came to Christ. Amen. It's no different than when you had a crisis in your personal life before you got saved. Thank you, Everybody Father God. Everybody goes through that moment where it leads them to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Read the Bible. You'll discover from Genesis to Revelation, everybody ran to Jesus. You remember Paul, before he was saw, he himself ran to Jesus. Yes, Because he Lord. understood that it's hard to kick against the prick. So understand, beloved. Understand, I believe somebody is being saved today. Amen. I believe somebody... A man is being redeemed back to God. Amen. Every redeemed sinner has a testimony. Yes. You and I ought to take this opportunity to share a testimony of life changing experience. Share your experience. Somebody has a testimony that if it had not been for the Lord yes. on their side, where, where would, would I be? be? Somebody can testify that yes, the virus may have struck me. But through the power of Christ's resurrection, I'm healed and alive and well. Yes. I believe somebody's walking out of that hospital, walking out of that hospital bed right now, going home, saying, I'm healed. Yes. In the name of Jesus. I believe that person that's at home being quarantined themselves. Yes. Is telling their family and friend, don't worry about me. I'm healed. In the name of Jesus. I'm alive and I'm aware. I'm yes. Aware. This is a special day for me, even though there's a special message that Christ wrote. Guess what? Because of this virus, he moved it out of me. He, he arose it out of me. He got it up. Out yes. Of me and I'm alive and aware. All because of the life giving power of the risen Christ. The truth is, church, a dead man doesn't have the power to change anybody. You think about that for a moment. A dead man can't talk. Dead man can't move. Amen. Dead man can't help. A dead man don't have the power to change nobody. But through our living Savior, Christ Jesus, who can work miracles in any wrecked and ruined life proves that the power is in Christ's resurrection. Amen. I hope you're hearing me today because Paul says, therefore, now there is no, Paul says, therefore, now that uh, 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 if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, now all things are now. Amen. New health. New attitude, new way of living, yes. new hopes, new joy, new dreams, new way of love, new way of forgiveness. Yes, All Lord. things are All now things. new in Christ Jesus. Amen. But not only is it a message of, of peace, not only is it a message of power, it's a message of potential. Amen. 